Poker is an intense game of bluffing, luck, and strategy. It may be easy to learn, but it's a hard game to master. Most amateurs and professionals fear the consequences of losing. However, one man does not fear the game, but instead bends it to his will. In today's video, we will take a look at the dominant rise of Phil Ivey, one of the most recognizable poker players in the world, and how he's regarded as one of the best poker players of all time. Stick around, this video might even inspire you to sharpen up your skills for poker night. Early Life Philip Dennis Ivey Jr., more often referred to as Phil Ivey, was born in Riverside, California on February 1, 1977, to his father, Philip Ivey Sr., and his mother, Pamela Ivey. A couple of months after birth, Ivy and his family moved to Roselle, New Jersey, where his interest in poker would later be sparked. Phil Ivy's grandfather introduced him to poker at eight years old. The two would often play five-card stud, sometimes with real money to heighten the stakes. His grandfather was impressed at Phil Ivy's natural talent in the sport, telling him that he had a real shot at going professional. Ivy's love for the game would only grow fonder as he grew older. During his teen years, Ivy would crave to play at the casinos of Atlantic City, but because he was under 21 years old, he would not be legally allowed to do so. Eager to play and even addicted to hone his poker skills, Ivy would then resort to creating a fake ID to enter poker rooms. During his teen years, Ivy would be known as Jerome Graham, spending over 15 hours in poker rooms practicing his skills and testing out his strategies. He eventually got the nickname No Home Jerome, as regulars would often see Ivy in casinos most of the time, with his nickname pertaining to the fact that Ivy seemingly never goes home anymore. Once he turned legal, Ivy dropped the fake identity and would continue to play in Atlantic City casinos, where he eventually met Poker Hall of Fame members Barry Greenstein and Daniel Negreanu, who took Ivy in as an apprentice. They taught him everything he needed to know to succeed. After playing thousands of games and learning from the best, Phil Ivy was ready for the real deal, and this would then mark the start of his illustrious professional poker career. Career Beginnings Ivy started playing professionally in the late 1990s. The first tournament Ivy ever won in his career as a professional poker player was the Trops Customer Appreciation Invitation Tournament in Atlantic City, where he bagged $1,000 in cash. Not very long after, Ivy entered his very first World Series of Poker WSOP tournament, where he won his first ever World Series of Poker bracelet through the $2,500 Pot Limit Omaha tournament against Amarillo Slim, a legendary professional player inducted in the Poker Hall of Fame in 1992. Ivy took home $195,000 for his first ever World Series of Poker tournament win. Ivy's win against Amarillo Slim caused many fans to pay attention to the just beginning but already boisterous career. The media started taking notice, which catapulted Ivy and the popularity of poker itself into the mainstream media. Career Peak Ivy would continue to enter the World Series of Poker Tournament the following year, though he was not able to win in 2001. However, the year after was a completely different story. In 2002, Ivy entered and won three different World Series of Poker tournaments. In the World Series of Poker, the winner is not only awarded monetary compensation, but also a bracelet that signifies their WSOP championship or tournament wins. In addition to the four WSOP bracelets he had won in 2000 and 2002, Ivy would continue to bag home six more bracelets in 2005, 2009, 2010, 2013, and 2014. Currently, Ivy stands as the second most awarded professional player with 10 WSOP bracelets alongside fellow Poker Hall of Fame members Doyle Brunson and Johnny Chan. He's also seen success in the World Poker Tour series of competitions, where he would place fourth in the No Limit Hold'em main event in Manchetucket, second in a similar event in Tunica, and in 2008, first in the No Limit Hold'em championship event, which he bagged $1.6 million, making this his first and only World Poker Tour title. In 2012, Ivy competed in Australia in the Aussie Millions Tournament, where he joined in multiple events, but succeeded the most in the No Limit Hold'em $250,000 challenge. 
he eventually faced off against European Poker Tour title holder Patrick Antonius. Ivy won against Antonius and won a cool $2 million. In the same tournament, but at a different event, Ivy would also place 12th bringing home 100,000 Australian dollars. Because of his success, Ivy would return to this event two years later, winning the 2014 Aussie Millions LK Boutique $250,000 challenge for 4 million Australian dollars, the largest single cash winnings of his career. His success in the Aussie Millions made him return for a third year in 2015. Here, Ivy once again won the Aussie Millions $250,000 challenge again, this time for $2,205,000 Australian dollars. This would make Ivy the only player to have won two consecutive championships in the history of Aussie Millions. Poker Hall of Fame in 2017, just when Ivy hit 40 years old, he was eligible to enter the Poker Hall of Fame. The Poker Hall of Fame is the official Hall of Fame of professional poker in the United States. This Hall of Fame was founded in Las Vegas in 1979. The members of the Hall of Fame committee, as well as 18 members of the Blue Ribbon panel, decided a list of 10 finalists annually. In 2017, Ivy was said to have made the cut in the top 10, eventually being awarded the membership in the Poker Hall of Fame soon after. He, alongside Great Britain's David Elliott, were the only new members of the Poker Hall of Fame in 2017. In a statement he released to the media, Ivy said, It's an honor to be inducted alongside legends like Chip Reese and Doyle Brunson. I love the game of poker poker and the game has done a lot for me. I am one of the lucky people who has been able to make a living playing a game which was always my passion. Thank you to my family, my friends, and all the poker fans across the world that supported me on this journey. Controversies like many successful people, Ivy's life and career wasn't always on a high and also had moments of downfall. Ivy started seeing a woman named Lucietta way back in high school who he eventually married later on. Despite Ivy's only positive ramblings about his wife in front of the media, in 2009 the two filed for a divorce, and by the end of that year everything was settled. While divorce isn't inherently bad, Phil and Lucietta's case was rough as the court granted Lucietta to receive $180,000 out of the $920,000 a month paycheck that Ivy received from Full Tilt Poker. Lucietta decided to push her luck and get their divorce contract reevaluated in hopes of getting a bigger share of Ivy's money. But the court dismissed Lucietta's new demands as it was revealed that Phil had paid over $170,000 worth of her credit card debts and over $15 million worth of other debts in the original settlement. Regardless of who was in the right or wrong, this divorce had Ivy on the losing end financially, making him extremely cautious in entering another relationship. Professionally, Ivy also had stumbling moments. Twice, Ivy had been successfully sued by casinos on accusations of cheating, specifically edge sorting. Edge sorting is a form of cheating which involves the memorization of imperfections present on the back of playing cards, such as dents, dirt, folded edges, or card misprints. Ivy was first accused of edge sorting in August 2012 when he played Punto Banco at Crockford's London. On his second accusation in April 2014, the Borgata Casino in Atlantic City, New Jersey sued Ivy by claiming Ivy took advantage of the manufacturing defects of the playing cards used. Ivy would lose both cases despite attempts at appealing, and he would lose the $15.6 million for his reclaimed winnings and the legal settlement fees. 2014 would be the last year we would see Ivy on the poker table until 2022. Present Day while Ivy stumbled in his career, he is looking to pick himself back up as he joins the 2022 World Series of Poker once again after an eight-year hiatus. Ivy slowly started getting back into the world of poker, with him reaching five final tables at the Super High Roller Series Europe in April. This caused many to question whether Ivy was finally going to return to the World Series of Poker. And while he didn't confirm it for a while, we got to see Ivy in front of the poker table once again at the $100,000 High Roller No Limit Hold'em event. Ivy reached the finals, but bowed out to Alexius Ponikovs. Despite his loss, fans are eager about Ivy's return, with many claiming that he still is the best player in the world alive today. Outside of playing poker, Ivy has been giving back to the community by establishing his own charitable organization, focusing on providing education to underprivileged children. Ivy teamed up with his mom to create the Budding Ivy Foundation to honor Ivy's grandfather. 
who had a passion for helping children. The Budding Ivy Foundation provides children enrichment programs that supplements their learning via specialized tutoring and providing reading materials. The Budding Ivy Foundation also gives out two full scholarships per school year to students that are in need of financial help in college, especially those who are looking to pursue a career in the field of STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Despite having his own shared charitable foundation, Ivy has given back to the community through different media on various occasions. Ivy has donated thousands of dollars to empower to excel a non-profit Christian Academy located in Las Vegas that promotes academic excellence and character development. Ivy's donations allowed several students to receive a full scholarship. Additionally, Ivy pledged to always donate 1% of his winnings in any tournament he competes in to support Bad Bear on Cancer. This foundation focuses on providing free cancer screening in various cities all over the world while conducting cancer research at the same time. Despite his imperfections and his criticisms of being a gambler, Phil Ivy has given back to the community and only wants to continue playing the game the right way, while cementing his legacy as one of the greatest poker players of all time. At a young age of 85, Phil Ivey is already considered a legend in the field of poker, with many claiming that he is one of, if not the best poker player in the world. He came out strong early in his career, and while he had several setbacks in the middle of his career, especially in his personal life, Ivey is once again back in poker rooms, dominating the poker table. The legendary Phil Ivey refused to fold and continues to make a name for himself, proving to everyone that he's deserving of being part of the Poker Hall of Fame. That's going to wrap this up. If you enjoyed, be sure to check out another one of our videos. Until next time.